disaster has struck. The Francis Scott Key Bridge is no more. In case you guys haven't heard yet, the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, Maryland has completely collapsed into the sea. Now there's a lot of information floating around about what happened, what this means for the city and such. So in this video, I'm gonna fill you in on exactly what the Key Bridge was, what we know so far about how it collapsed, as well as how the loss of the structure will impact the Baltimore area and the rest of the country. Hit that like button, subscribe if you love infrastructure and geography, and let's talk about the Francis Scott Key Bridge. So the first thing we need to understand is what was the Key Bridge? The Francis Scott Key Bridge was a steel arc truss bridge that carried four lanes of Interstate 695, the Baltimore Beltway, over the Patapsco River, and it saw around 34,000 vehicles per day. The main span of 1,200 feet, 366 meters, was the third longest span of any continuous truss in the world, and its total length was 8,636 feet. It was the second longest bridge in the Baltimore metro area after the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. It had a vertical clearance of 185 feet and a spacing of 1,200 feet between the main pillars, which allowed a large amount of space for vessels to pass underneath. It originally opened in 1977 and was named for Francis Scott Key, author of the Star Spangled Banner, America's national anthem. The bridge was a tolled route and it was used as an alternative through route for oversized and hazmat vehicles, which are prohibited from using I-95 and I-895, also known as the Baltimore Harbor Tunnel and the Fort McHenry Tunnel, respectively. The key bridge was the outermost of the Patapsco River crossings and connected the Hawkins Port neighborhood of Baltimore with Dundalk in Baltimore County. And now that we're all up to speed on what the bridge was, let's talk about exactly what happened to bring it down. Around 1.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, a container ship known as the MV Dolly crashed into one of those main pillars. The collapse was complete and happened almost immediately upon impact. Upon further investigation, officials say the vessel was registered to Singapore and Greek-owned. It lost power shortly before impact but was able to get out a distress call to stop cars from entering the bridge prior to impact. Thanks to this, many lives were saved who otherwise would have plunged into the river with the collapse. Unfortunately, there was a construction crew on the bridge at this time, and eight workers were present. Rescuers are able to recover two people alive while the other six are now presumed to be dead. And as of a couple days ago, the bodies of two of those six people have been recovered. Now, one of the most important questions is how will this impact Baltimore and the rest of the country? First, let's talk about the Port of Baltimore. As of right now, the Port of Baltimore has stated that all vessel traffic is suspended until further notice but trucks will still be processed within their marine terminals. The Port of Baltimore is the closest East Coast port to the Midwest and is number one in the U.S. for handling cars and small trucks. It is the ninth biggest U.S. port for international cargo and supports over 15,000 jobs. Judah Levine of logistics firm Freitos said that routing cargo to the Port of New York, New Jersey, Norfolk, and Philadelphia could possibly increase trucking and rail prices if the volume is significant and causes congestion at those ports. It could also possibly impact Asian and transatlantic U.S. East Coast rates. But overall, it's too early to determine whether the closure of the port will have a major impact on shipping costs due to not knowing exactly how long the port will remain closed. Governor Wes Moore says it's too early to say when ships will be able to enter the port again. One silver lining is that apparently there's a narrow channel through the center of the river which large ships will be able to use while workers clear the debris but there is still no word on when or if this will be possible. And now the impact on roadway traffic. The Key Bridge typically saw around 34,000 vehicles per day of traffic. It was on the eastern side of the Baltimore Beltway and was the go-to route for hazmat and other large vehicles to pass through the region. Overall, there were four routes to get through the Baltimore area prior to the collapse. The western side of I-695, the I-95 Baltimore Harbor Tunnel, the I-895 Fort McHenry Tunnel, and this bridge on the eastern side of I-695. All of these routes were told except for the longest route, which was the western I-695 route. The most immediate impact has been on the two tunnel routes as I've been monitoring the congestion from Google over the past several days and noticed both of them in the red throughout most of the day. Most normal sized vehicles will take these routes as they are shorter and easier. Now back when I traveled around Baltimore, I found the traffic on both routes to be relatively light, especially the I-895 route but I'm sure that is not the case now. I-95 has more overall lane capacity, but I-895 has very few exits, so it functions better if you're just trying to get through the city. 
Large vehicles and hazmat vehicles will be forced to use the longer Western I-695 route, so this could possibly cause some delays for certain goods and shipping. If you're local to Baltimore, then you have more options. If you notice, once you're out of the tunnels, then the traffic dissipates quite a bit. This is due to you now having the option of using surface streets to get around. Overall, if you're trying to get through the city, then I-95 appears to be the superior route compared to I-895. And now the final thing I want to address is what is next? What? Now, well, first off, here in America, in light of a tragedy, when we rebuild, we rebuild bigger and better than before. Recall the I-35W collapse in Minneapolis years ago. I visited that area last summer, and the new structure is one of the safest, most durable river crossings in the country. You might also recall the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in St. Petersburg, Florida, where a similar tragedy occurred that sent the original structure and several motorists crashing down into Tampa Bay. The new Sunshine Skyway was rebuilt to withstand the possibility of such an impact in the future. With the Key Bridge, Governor Wesmore has declined to comment on rebuilding as of yet, but President Joe Biden has stated that the federal government will cover the full cost to replace the bridge. The original bridge that was very tight, very narrow shoulders, so I could see it taking elements from the Sunshine Skyway with this more spacious design. I don't see it being wider than the original four lanes as far as capacity, as I've never encountered much congestion on this side of the Beltway, and Baltimore isn't exactly a fast-growing metro. However, I do expect them to widen the deck to provide room for breakdowns or emergencies on the shoulder similar to the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Tampa. On one of the occasions that I drove over the bridge, there was actually some type of incident in the right lane which blocked traffic and could have potentially caused more issues for other drivers. You can find that video linked in the description. I've also seen some people mention the possibility of a tunnel. It is unlikely that this bridge will be replaced with a tunnel due to the cost and the inability of hazmat vehicles to use tunnels. But at the end of the day, it's way too early to tell as no one is even discussing potential designs or overall costs for the rebuild. Personally, I expect it to be at a minimum 500 million and I wouldn't be surprised if it got all the way up to a billion, but we shall see. But make no mistake, the bridge will be rebuilt and I wouldn't be surprised to see it done by 2030 at the latest. And there you have it guys, the Francis Scott Key Bridge. What a tragedy. Rest in peace to the workers who happened to be on the bridge during that collapse. Let me know what you guys think about this disaster in the comments, if you ever had a chance to drive across that original bridge, or what do you think the replacement should look like? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.